All right, we have a question here from Garav, and he's basically saying, you know, he has a column with zeros and ones, or eventually it can be yeses or nos. And he goes, how do you actually plot this kind of data, or how do you handle them? All right, so send me a screenshot. You can see that there are some yeses and nos. And what he's been able to do is go from how do you count them as individual entries versus how you're splitting them, right? So let, let me show you what I mean. So if I go into a, a data set, and I think a lot of people will probably experience this issue if you're not used to how data types work, meaning if you have words, words are counted sometimes differently to numbers or how they behave is very different. So I'll show you what I mean. In this data set, actually, we'll zoom in a bit more. Um, I just woke up, so my eyesight's not great. Um, you have, you know, some sort of entry of a field. It can be duplicates, whatever it might be. And then you have zeros and ones, right? But what we'll do is we'll also add yes and no. So we'll go, I'll do the easy way, actually. We'll just go no's for the zeros and yes for this. So I'll just say yes, no, right? And we'll just save this. And I've already loaded this into a data, uh, into a visualization here. So let me just refresh so we get that new field. Right. So if I look at this data set again, same thing, right? Yeses and no. So let's start with field and value. Now value, see how it's zero and one. It's going to store itself into the measures, right? So I'm in version 2020. So maybe yours will look different. You'll have measures down here, right? And you'll have value, but it's the same idea. They've just organ reorganized it, right? So basically if I go, well, how many zeros, how many ones? It's not straightforward in how to do it, right? So if I go value and just add it, it's just going to add the values, right? That's, that's all it's going to do, which isn't really what we need it to do. We actually need it to separate. So if I go yes and no here, it will still sum it up, but you can see that the no's have disappeared. So the question of how many yeses, how many no's isn't so apparent, right? Yeses have 18 entries. I just wanted to double check that. So then how do you actually count how many yeses and nos? Well, one thing you can do is, yes, you can add this yes and no from the Excel file and count from there. Okay. So if I replace um, this sum of value to count this yes and no, so right click, drag and go count, you can do it that way. Right. If you don't have the yes and no, you would have to program it in. So let me show you how you do that. Right. So if I didn't have this, I'll just let's just yeah, we'll leave it like that. You would go create calculated field and you just go value check. Let's call it right. If value is equal to zero, then no. Um, else yes end and that bothers me no caps and go OK, right? So now these two would be equivalent. So if we look at the data set, right? And we look at value check, you can see they're the same. So that's how you would handle it if you didn't have them. How do you do it if you don't have either of them, okay? And this is the method I prefer because then you don't have to write any formulas, you don't have to do anything to your Excel files because one of the problems is, let's say I have my Excel file like this and it comes out of the system like this. I don't wanna have to go into the Excel file every day and write that formula in or extend the formula down to the new records. I just want it to be programmed automatically. Okay, so one of the things I can do is, let's get rid of this. Let's say I didn't have these two, all right? So I'm gonna hide them. How do I visualize just using these two? Well, one of the things you can, one of the things you can do is convert the value to a, um, uh, to a dimension. So you right click here and go convert to dimension, right? So instead of it being treated mathematically because it's in a measure, it gets treated a little bit differently because it's a dimension. So you can do it that way or you can just click and drag into dimensions, right? And now it's a value. The way I think about it is that these values are now treated as individual points of data. Whereas in measures, it's treated as a mathematical value that you can perform math on, right? So now if I do value like so, it will still aggregate them, but you can see how it separates them into distinct points, yeah? And then if I just count, let's say, the number of fields, 
I can do it in kind of one go, right? So it's kind of a little bit fidgety if you're not used to it. Um, and you do have a number of options as to how you would do it. What I recommend when you're still learning how this all works is just to do constant checks, right? So let's say I did it this way. I'm going to go back to the Excel file and just make sure that there really is, you know, what is it? Eight entries here, eight, and here are 18, right? Which is also something you should do professionally anyway. Always check, double check um, the results because sometimes we get carried away with Tableau that you start visualizing things, you don't check it, and it turns out you've got some sort of multiplier in there or you're counting something you shouldn't be counting or it's doing something you don't know. And when your data set is only 27, it's a little bit easy. Well, what happens if it's 27,000 or 27 million? It's a lot harder to see those little differences. So I actually have a pen and paper with me when I'm doing uh, pretty complex builds and I'm just keeping tabs of like how many I expect in the next visualization. If it's off, then I know something's wrong, okay? So that's how I would deal with zeros and ones. If you like this video, um, give me one of those likes. I think that's the first time I've ever asked for it, but it does help with the channel. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.